morning friends I am not working but I'm working a little I'm trying to find an angle because I want to talk to you for a minute and I don't want it to be weird or weirder um check out my pimple I feel like it makes sense that if I was going through that space like um the time where I'm revisiting the maidenhood of my life it made sense that I got a pimple I feel it was a very cool pimple thank you pimple for being here and reminding me that I am a powerful being and that I can do this also all right I'm gonna sit this down and stop being silly and just talk so I want to talk a little bit about the addiction aspect to my self-healing and maybe share a little bit about that as I'm feeling maybe it's time to do that um so that being said uh I am about 143 days alcohol free after probably about 20 years not being alcohol free and not the whole 20 years was I like I have a drinker where I'm at probably yeah when I was like 24 I think it was more for fun but by the time I was like 26 it was a pretty regular thing in my life like dinner involved drinks socializing involved drinks sad happy celebration involved drinks you know what I mean like it just was a part of what I did um I was a late bloomer as far as drugs came and when I first approached them, it was really about experimenting with myself, which is kind of really the nature of how I relate to them. Um, when I stopped drinking, I also was wanting to stop using cocaine so regularly. Not the right word, but I'm still working there. Um, it had probably been 10 years that it was pretty regular. Um, and I don't feel like I was a person who was so connected to her addiction that I lost work or um, financially risk things, but I just feel like the workings of it in my mind were a, just a different spin on what that addiction, that particular addiction meant to me. Um, in the 143 days, there was one speed bump, ha ha ha, where I was not happy and I went out and got some drugs and did them all, which was usually not what I did um, I was the kind of drug addict that liked to get it and hold on to it for dear life <laughs> because it just felt better having it with me and if I just could do a little bits here and there it literally felt like my lifeline to being alive it was a secret that I don't feel like anybody really knew and now that I'm in my recovery the hardest part has been fucking Facebook memories. <laughs> it's like everyone in the picture is having an experience and I'm high over and over and over and over again. And if I'm not, I know what I'm thinking in that picture, which is probably about to be or wanting to be. Like I can see my eyes, you know? And I was sharing a spot in an narcotic Narcotics Anonymous meeting where I said that that was kind of like the torture for me at this point but I don't think it's really torture for me that part of my addiction that particular addiction for me made me feel alive it made me feel like excited out loud like and worthy and also like pretty powerful so for me it I mean, that's how I want it to feel. I'm not a stupid girl. 
I mean, you know, like to me, if I want something, that's it. I'm going to go get it. You know, like that was how my mind worked. And that's how I justified it. It's like, well, I feel better. I've earned this money. This is my time out. This is what I'm doing. I didn't give a shit if I was lying to my partner or myself. <sighs> there were very few, like, boundaries that existed between that relationship for me. It was very personal. And, it, I mean, it was a likened to, like, your masturbation relationship. To me, it was nobody's fucking business. And I was going to do it exactly how I was going to do it. I was doing it to take care of myself because that's what I needed. And you couldn't have told me shit. You didn't. Nobody told me shit until I was ready to say it myself. And this, again, is not shaming or hating on that. Because even there, I felt happy. It just got smaller and smaller and smaller windows, which is then when the problem comes, you know. And this is not to say everyone's addiction is the same. And that's exactly why I feel like I've had so much trepidation around sharing. I think that there's a lot of people like me that float in this land of controlling their addiction. And they do such a good job balancing multiple addictions. That the one that, or maybe that multiple of them in my case actually, if I'm being honest, I just wrote down about so much. Maybe that, you know, they all balance each other out so much. It's like, well, I don't do it too much. I don't do that too much. But it's all too much, you know. When so many of the things that we're balancing are, are having to be justified because we earned this right to be this way or to, you know, I, I, I keep hearing some of my people my age, the 40 age, well, talking about the young people who haven't earned their rights to be angry, sad, depressed, whatever it is, tired. Um, and it kind of felt like that with me, with my addiction. Like, I didn't earn the right to claim that. I'm still not sure how I feel. Like, my arms are telling me that I'm still not ready to have a name. And maybe I don't need a name. I think maybe that's the best answer for that for right now. I don't need a name for that. And, and that did, does definitely tie into like my mental health and that whole space and how the more that I allowed my own way of living in the addictions and balancing them was I able to feel like I was taking care of my mental health you know what I mean like I drank to relax and then once I was relaxed I wanted to get high so I could feel alive to me that made perfect sense you know um I also kind of disconnected it from my body and I said well I'm not doing it too much I mean there were times when it was much much and the fact that it was every time I could get out of the space of my family setting and you know like if it was do you want to have money for the rest of the week or are you gonna have this in your pocket I always had it in my pocket. Never, ever, ever a question. It was, that was the first thing. That was my bg <laughs> Um, But again, I'm not throwing shade there. There were times when I had great epiphanies. And for my healing, I couldn't just stop because I wanted to stop. And I had been wanting to, like, chill on that for a minute. Like, I'm not going all there, but for a minute I've been wanting to. And I wasn't able to. And I blamed it on the booze because I never ever, I didn't do it unless I was drinking. So it just seemed really easy to take away the drinking. We won't get there, you know? If you don't cross the bridge, you won't go onto that island. That was kind of how it was. But then I knew, like, lurking. And ultimately, like, I don't want to be a person that says, I can't have this in my life. I want to be a person that has control of her vibration so that I don't need these things. If they come up and I feel like it, fine. Is it likely to come up? Probably not not the way that I'm shifting because it's just not in that space you know I remember purposely shifting to that space because I wanted it more like I remember wanting it more um it kind of reminds me of the conversation I was having with my coach about the mental illness like how do I start that conversation in a group 
And I thought, well, I know. I'm going to hold this. It's warm. I thought, well, I know people know TV. Because <gasps> I'm not a reader. I can't say, let's talk about a book. That's great for some people. It's not going to work for me. So I said in my head, oh, this is the time we can talk about U.S. of Terra. And then I wrote down words. Where are they? These are good words. Oh, I think they're up on the envelope. It was one of those, you know, when I'm doing the wash dishes meditation, and I get those really powerful, um, usually um, instinctual nuggets. Like, I got my name there. I've gotten big epiphanies with the water and the tuning in because I'm all, I'm all, I always like go into a mood of appreciation. Like right now, I'm feeling it in my body. Whew, Jesus. <laughs> I feel very happy that I'm having so much energy this morning. And I feel like that means that it's time for me to share this. And I felt so weird about it for so long. And it's because I don't want to lose people. But I also know that that's a codependent thing and that's something that I've moved away from and forgiving is forgiving all that. I never blamed anybody. I'd be more mad at you if you told me no. And everybody who's told me no knows that. <laughs> hey, you didn't tell me no like more than once. <laughs> Ever. Did you? You didn't. <laughs> um... My thing is, wherever you are with any of that, you don't need to fit into a box. You don't need to be diagnosed. You don't need to know because somebody told you. I teach that the knowing here is the knowing that we need to know. This is our knowing that is connected to our highest ability of availability of knowing. And clarity is the thing that you want. Clarity gives you the faith, the will, you know, it brings the hope. It's like, well, now that you say it that way, you know, but you can't get that clarity until you let it be in your body, until you're ready to do it. Like anyone can say it a thousand times, well, this is not good for you. No fucking shit. <laughs> Neither was how I felt. <laughs> and it just is so deep. And I feel like I was doing a great job, I, just like my grandmother. I remember the story about mental health and U.S. Terra and me and my grandma. And my grandmother and my mom were at the doctor, maybe my aunt too. They used to do everything, like <laughs> Golden Girls. And I don't remember for the, all the details, but. It was a check on my grandmom's depression stuff and cognitive maybe even things. And my, my grandmother spoke with the doctor, the doctor left, and it was a very lighthearted conversation. And she goes to my mother, bold them, didn't I? And I just felt that so. And I've heard my grandmom talk about why that happened. Like, she didn't feel like it was appropriate for her to feel things out loud. She was a child that was to be seen and not heard. And that's not because I know this from my family telling me this. And that I don't know if they'll ever agree with me, but that's the way that she felt in her head. And that became something that she, like, constantly groomed herself to, like, appear poised and together and fooling them and it just makes me wonder like how much we connected it makes me remember about her connecting when she was in the midst of her Alzheimer's and I know there was a space between that full letting go into the illness if we call it that I don't think it's that anymore uh, I know there was a space when she, you know, when there's still clarity, like when she could turn to my mom and say that, um, it feels like for those little moments, she was truly living and that's a really fucked up thing to think and feel. And it's a truly fucked up thing to experience. And I have, you know, but it was even with the drugs or with my,
other things where it just felt like now I'm alive. I'm doing something on purpose. This is, I have control. You know, this is what I want it to appear as. And they believed me. I want it to go in as confident. And this little bag of magical dust makes me confident. Makes me pretty. You know? And not pretty, like pretty, pretty here. So that I feel pretty. It's all about how we feel. We only do any of this stuff for how we feel. We want to feel better. We want to feel happier. We want to feel liver. We want to feel more in control. We want to feel whatever it is. I just was really, really into feeling that, you know, it just became all that it was. And I just needed to get that nugget of fog lifted with the clarity come back that I was the one that gets to choose that feeling and that I just needed to slow that momentum down and just pick a different way, you know, and relapsing and restarting and just thinking about it was part of it. Like getting ready to be ready is real. You don't just wake up and, I mean, sure, you do think people do things cold turkey. They've been thinking about it or they've had, like, a breakthrough that it's just undeniable. It's a no. It's a clarity. Like, I don't need that anymore. It's kind of the same thing. And I feel like there are so many people that walk around in that fine line of what they decide they get to do in the name of, I earned this. And in reality, of course, you're free to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any of the parts. If you're doing it from a place of, I feel great and I want this too. That's kind of what I've learned through like praying. And for myself, I just don't necessarily want those anymore. I've just spent so much time there. I'm fine not being there. Like, of course, it's weird sometimes. Like, what do you do? What do people do when they're not at the bar? (laughs) You know? But so I'll go to the bar. Of course, nobody's going to the bar right now. But, you know, it's not like I don't want to do the things. I just, I don't really know all the things. I don't know all my answers yet either, you know. I know a lot of it is making new spaces for people that kind of want the same uh, acknowledgement, you know. I don't know the right word there either. And I don't want to get too lost in that misdirection, but I just felt like it was, all right, we wanted to come clean. We had to say it. We just had to. We wanted to come clean about coming clean today, specifically. I'm sure I'll find out why more later. And now I'm going to go. Have a great day.